Hey guys, I haven't been live on this page in quite some time, but I feel really led to to come on and speak to women. And I think that women have a huge level of responsibility that sometimes goes unnoticed. Um, we're moms, wives, mothers, daughters, friends. Um, we wear a lot of hats. And it's so easy to get consumed in that process. It's so easy to feel unseen. It's so easy to feel unappreciated. It's so easy to feel overwhelmed and exhausted and none of that takes away the desires that we have for something different for a different experience for a new level of fulfillment none of those you know i'm tired and i'm exhausted and i'm overwhelmed and i'm unhappy i'm not at peace none of that removes these innate desires we have that I believe God has placed on the inside of us for peace and love and abundance and joy and all the things. That desire, you know, still remains in the midst of all the responsibilities that we have and all of the, the different roles that we have to play, you know, Uber driver, nurse, therapist, you know, all the things when in actuality, Sometimes we are the people that need to have someone listen to us. And a lot of times we take on all of these responsibilities for other people and we haven't done anything for ourselves. We feel like there is no time or space. Um, I remember asking myself, is this what the rest of my life <laughs> looks like? I um, I got married. I no. I this is the order that it happened in. I I opened a business. I got married and I had a baby. All in a three-year time frame. I was a new mom. I had about twelve staff in my brick and mortar business, and I really just felt stuck. I, I was overwhelmed and so I know what that feels like but what we don't realize that happens oftentimes when we are in that space is that we actually attract more of what we don't desire into our lives we attract more exhaustion we attract more frustration we attract more moments where we feel like we're not heard and we create an energy y'all got to hear me we create an energy behind that that continues to attract more and more of the same situations it's almost like self-sabotage and it's so easy because when we're in that space, we're also in an extreme, I'm going to say unhealthy measure of masculine energy. And everything in our life feels hurried or rushed. Um, and, and listen, masculine energy is good. Everybody has it. Male, female, we all have masculine and feminine energy the the healthiest part of having those is when we learn to balance them right but when you are in a space of overwhelm in your life that masculine energy rises up and takes over and it instead of it becoming an energy that supports what you're wanting to do and how you're wanting to grow it dominates 
your entire process. Instead of it being a container for all of your feminine energy, which is your more creative side, which is your more trusting side, it becomes like this wall. So one of the things that normally happens when we're accessing new levels of, of spiritual growth in our life, especially if we feel that somebody has dropped the ball on us, right? Because if we've ever had one person drop the ball, we can feel like everybody else is dropping the ball on us too. When in actuality, it's just projection. It's, it's what we're projecting out into the world. I hope somebody let me know, is this making sense? Is this registering to you? And this, you know, what I'm sharing now, I'm so, number one, careful about, you know, even talking about it. But boldly, I understand this is a part of the work that I do. And I understand that if we do not do inner work, if we don't reach levels of healing, we will continue to sabotage things that are meant to bless us. And so, for instance, I remember when I got divorced, I realized just how much I was operating in my masculine energy. And it's because the ball had been dropped on me, right? I felt like I was doing, you know, the bulk of everything and not being supported. And, you know, different people have different tendencies. So I'm not like a super rowdy person by nature. It's not my nature. I can't go there now. I can go there. But that's, it's, it's not my nature. But what was happening for me is I was irritable. I, I didn't trust things. Um, I, because the ball had been dropped, I took the place of being the victim. And that place often leaves you in attack mode, right? Or it leaves you in a space where you don't take, you know, personal responsibility. Now, I I am a coach. Um, I'm a coach, a certified life coach. I am a business coach and a business consultant and I operate in different realms depending on what how people hire me or come to work with me but I will say that there are times where coaching is not necessarily what people need consulting is not necessarily what people need it could be you know therapy like a licensed professional that you could just dump it all out on and find a different measure of solutions. But sometimes we, we need wise counsel from coaches. And, and life coaches really come to share their life experience with you and how they've overcome it. And one of the big things for me was no longer seeing myself as the victim. And the moment that I took on the mindset that I wasn't the victim, Right. Although there were things I was being victimized in. Right. I realized that I was actually the victor. And what that did, that gave me a different perspective about everything. So I remember having a conversation with my girlfriend one time and I was telling her something I wanted to do. And my husband at that time wasn't in alignment with it. And she said to me, well, you know, you still can do that. Right. It wasn't anything outside of, you know, any, you know, marital restrictions or anything that would be um, neglectful in a marriage. She was just like, you can still do that, like, on your own. And I heard her. And I was a little offended. I didn't say anything. But when I got off the phone, I was like, she doesn't understand. You know, she's not married. And then we had another conversation and I came with the same thing again. Because over time, even your friends get tired of hearing your complaints. Even your friends get tired of giving you suggestions that you're not doing. Right? But she, she said it to me again. And it clicked. And I said, you know, I'm 
waiting on him to do something that I can do on my own. And guys, I'm going to just say what it was. It was tithing, right? So it's not even what y'all thought, right? But it was tithing. And I was like, if we were tithing together, we'd be so much. She was like, you, you know, you can do that on your own, right? And I know you, you may be thinking that that's such a small thing. But for me, in, in my walk, it was huge, right? I was getting an understanding of tithing and we were married. So I was thinking, you know, it needs to be our entire household. So I just begin to tie right um, but I use that particular example because you know I was offended at first and oftentimes when we are in a victim state of mind we can't see any space of responsibility that we can take on our own to make changes on our own right um, there were other things that I'm sure I would complained to her about before because, you know, my daughter was super active in tons of activities. I, I never miss parent-teacher meetings, class parties, field trips. Um, she was in ballet, tap, jazz, um, gymnastics. She was cheered. I mean, she was a very active child, which meant that I was juggling my schedule in order to get her to those different places and not feeling super uh, supportive and so I just began to I said look I I can't I can't do this because what was happening is I was attracting more and more and more of those same situations and it was the energy it was the energy by which I came from it gave me a new level an even higher level of emotional intelligence and I always go back to the serenity prayer, always. Because there are certain things that I cannot change. And I have to be okay with those things that I can't change. But the things that I can change, if I really desire what it is I say I desire, God has given me the power to do that. Now that may not always look like how, it's, how I want it to look. It may not always feel the way that I want it to feel as I'm making that change or making those changes. But I had to take a, a real hard look in the mirror and realize I was a common denominator to every circumstance that was transpiring in my life. But I couldn't do that if I still had this victim mindset. I couldn't do that from a place of complaining. I, I could make I could say 50 different reasons why I didn't do whatever, but at the end of the day, when I took the mask of being the victim off, many of them were excuses because of how I was feeling. And when I decided I no longer want to feel this way, do you know answers began to come? And see, when you've got a whole lot of responsibility, and some of the things um, we create, some of the added extra stuff we create, and it comes from a place of scarcity, scarcity mindset, scarcity thinking, lack thinking. So let me hurry up and do all the things. And then, you know, our identity, how we're identifying who we are, people pleasing, all the things. You guys hear me talk often about the self-aware cis stage. That is that stage where um, you're kind of coming into an awareness of some of the things that have been transpiring that you've probably heard over and over again from several different people that you may have ignored or, um, but it's a, a time where you're becoming aware but you just don't know, you know, what to necessarily do about what it is that you're feeling and so control becomes your tool and the space of control is very masculine very masculine it's, it's a different energy from feminine energy unhealthy masculine is what we use when we don't feel we have control we attempt to control everything everything everyone 
every situation, our communication. But it wasn't until I decided that I was no longer the victim. And what really began to penetrate for me was the fact that I call myself a believer. And I had to say, well, what are you believing in? What is it that you really believe? And a lot of the conversation that we're having with ourselves often its what we believe. It's what's embedded in our subconscious programming. And so if we've not been supported, we carry the energy that we cannot be supported. And so when help and support even is available, we resist it. One of the things, I, and so simple, I give you guys some just really simple things to shift your energy sometimes, like, you know, getting up in the morning and making your bed. Do you know how important coming to a, a, a room that's clean and neat and it, how it impacts your energy? One of my previous clients uh, did a post recently about... Um, going to the grocery store not knowing what to get and just leaving and you know she asked for suggestions on meal prep and it was an open ended post and um, I shared that I used to meal prep this is something that I talk about inside uh, my academy so I, I actually give practical life things that help me to get unstuck but I will tell you hands down inner work and healing You know, at some point we got to slow down and we got to say, is what I'm doing working? Do I feel fulfilled? Am I angry and I'm taking the angry energy with me everywhere and blaming everything that's going on on everybody that I come in contact with? So for those of you who are entrepreneurs, you're building your business from your energy. You're building your business from your energy. And what happens as you do inner work and healing, you reach new uh, levels of, of spiritual growth, some things are going to fall off. But it has to be a space of awareness where you're willing to do the work and some of us I'm just going to keep some of us have not been spoken to well like we haven't had people to affirm us and support us and all of those things and so those are the conversations that we're constantly having with ourselves and then projecting that out into the world space and then attracting it right back to us you know, one of the things that helped me too was my identity in Christ. You know, when you say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, is that something that you believe? Do you really internalize that? Or, and I made a post about this recently, is going to church just this religious act that we do? Or, or do we really believe those words? Some of us don't know that it can feel any different because we've been in fight or flight mode our entire lives but I'm here to tell you if you believe that Bible <laughs> that you read the interactions that you make in the church building then you become a product of it and you begin to project that belief out into the world space. That belief is a level of trust. And I believe we all need boundaries, right? And boundaries aren't about keeping other people out as much as it's about knowing that you need to protect your energy and your space and your peace. But boundaries are hard and difficult to create when you don't trust. See, I can release people and things because I know that we live in a world of abundance. 
And if that doesn't work, something else will. You got to tap into a measure of freedom in how you feel. And sometimes, like I said before, it means slowing down. I did a broadcast on my business page about slowing down. So that we can see, like, what's really important here? <laughs> because some of it isn't important to building up the quality of life that you desire. And there's nothing worse to me than having a whole lot of money and being miserable. And we see, or we hear, or maybe you have read incidents of extremely wealthy people who are unhappy. It's because they, they didn't do inner work. As within, so without. As within, so without. I'm breathing because I'm a woman. And I know sometimes if the bar has been dropped in other areas of our life, it shows up everywhere. And it can feel like this is going to be the rest of my life, but you, you got to slow down and take the time. Number one, to get in a different energy and a different mindset, um, a different space of belief. Because here in, when we talk about masculine energy, so masculine is a very doing energy. Do, 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 do. Like it can't really grasp impossibility because there's no level of trust so everything is masculine and this you know we, we talk about I talk about manifesting but that place is one of the hardest places to manifest anything different from because there really is no level of trust there's no trusting that you're being divinely led to the right place you might have moments of it here or there, but even let's imagine no inner work, no healing, and you're divinely led to the right place. And then self-aware sis reverses all of the possibility because she was operating so much in her masculine. She couldn't hear the help. She couldn't see the help. And so I just want to encourage you as women to really take time, space, money, whatever it is that you need to do to love on yourself. And some of us need a new picture. Some of you need a new picture of what loving yourself looks like because you cannot pour from an empty cup. If what is on the inside is dry and balled up and all those things, that's what you're going to give out. And for those of you who have children, it's definitely what you're going to give your kids. Your you're going to give it to your husband, your loved ones, your co-workers, right? And then it's going to feel like life is just treating you some kind of way. But energy is everything. And we're creating new levels and spaces of energy all the time. We're attracting things into our life and... You know, at some point we just make a decision like, you know, I've decided I'm going to live a fulfilling, amazing life. This life that feels amazing. And see, so many of us are not in touch with our bodies. We've become stoic in that measure because we've had to do it all, right? But some of the stuff that we feel we have to do It's help out there for us. We refuse the help. We hurt the help. We attack the help. We deny the help. I was sharing with you all earlier, one of the things I do is give simple things that can help to change your energy. You know, one, like making your bed. But another thing I share with my clients is when you're out and you're shopping and things of that nature and Guys ask you, can they pump your gas? Can they take your bags to the car? I got it. See, that energy alone is resisting help. Very masculine. 
And so I give my clients exercises to do, you know, while they're out and about, just to be in a space of receiving. Just to be in a space of receiving. That's my take, guys. I, I just kind of wanted to come in. My heart is for women, um, especially those who feel overwhelmed, overworked, exhausted. The ball has been dropped on you somewhere. You maybe lack support that you really deserve. And I just wanted to come on and hopefully speak a, a few words over you and encourage you that um, you're worthy of something different and you creating a new level of value for how you show up and, and who you are is important because it determines what you attract. And I believe that God desires us to live a life of peace, joy, love, kindness, self-control, you know, all of the fruits of the Spirit, right? But when we read Scripture, it says our lives are transformed by the renewing of our mind. And your mind, your so renewing of our mind, that's your soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions. So as we renew our mind, our will, and our emotions, our lives are transformed. And so if you've been in a failed relationship or maybe you've gone through divorce like myself, I was married for 14 years. Yeah, it's renewing your mind. It's doing inner work. And different people are at different places, different spaces and stages. But the first stage is to be aware. Number one, aware that 